when people are adding pump fertilizers and things. And, and yeah, it's, yeah. it's like, oh man, no wonder you need to do water changes. Oak is kind of a long-term staple food, whereas alder gets eaten pretty much as soon as it's available. Well, hello. Come right on in. You're at Father Fish. What is the maximized diversity, biodiversity, in an aquarium? What does that look like? Well, to me, that would probably be a reasonably diverse microbiome, for example, um, in right. your substrate and in the water and living on surfaces. Certain diversity of plants, a certain diversity of your animal life that's in there, both the um, invertebrates and the vertebrates, so the fish. So yeah, I think it has to occur on every level. My sense is that nature seeks out to increase diversity by increasing its ability to assimilate nutrients. Mm -hmm. Now, does that make sense? Yes, I believe so. There was an interview with a gentleman from the Max Planck Institute here in Germany, and they were having a discussion about excess nutrients from agriculture here in Germany. And he said something really interesting. He said, you know, you would think that the more nutrients, the more biodiverse, but he, he said that that's not actually always the case. If you have a natural environment, like he used an example of grassland environments here in Germany, where in general, like the soil, for instance, is pretty nutrient poor. If you increase the nutrients in the soil, what winds up happening is you actually see a decrease in biodiversity. And the reason that you see that is that when you get more nutrients, you, you suddenly start to see, for example, plants that are better adapted to utilize those nutrients, they suddenly take off, you know, and there's usually only a smaller number of species of those, they take off and the plants that are more adapted to poor nutrient conditions just can't compete with them. And so you get this kind of cascade from that where because of the changing nutrient content in the plants, you get a change in like say your insects and your other animal life that is living there and you'd get, you know, you, I would also assume you would see more of a shift in your um, soil microbiome as well, especially as, you know, your everything else becomes less biodiverse. So it's not always the case that the more nutrients, the more biodiverse, there seems to be kind of a cap on that, if that makes sense. Okay, so, so there's there's a level at which increasing nutrients in a system peaks out. Yes. Let's go to the aquarium. I think we do want to increase biodiversity. Mm -hmm. And to do that, we have to increase nutrients. Now, they have to be assimilated. We can't dump a can of fish food in there and expect it's going to increase biodiversity because it won't. It'll overwhelm the whole system and, and create a condition of pollution. Yeah, I think what you what you would get then is something more akin to eutrophication, where right. when you get an excess of, in particular, nitrogen and phosphorus, you get a whole lot of algae and cyanobacteria blooming, and it kind of chokes everything else out when people are adding, you know, the pump fertilizers and things. And, and yeah, it's, yeah. it's like, oh man, no wonder you need to do water changes. Yeah, exactly. Um, there's just so right. much available in the system that, yes, it can very quickly become overwhelming, you know, because, I mean, again, at the end of the day, your aquarium is a glass box. You know, nothing leaves unless you take it out. Nothing comes into it unless you put it in. Right. So, you know, if you're putting in too much, then yes, you are going to need to take stuff out. Are there certain nutrients mm -hmm. that remain essentially unchanged until they are, until they're consumed. Let me give you an example. I have a pond that I collect decaying leaves from. It's actually a little stream, but it floods a fairly wide plain. 
and it's in a forest. So there, there are loads of leaves in there and loads of leaves on the water. Now, now this is early spring. I'm collecting leaves right now that are unchanged from last fall. They have not begun to break down. Now, presumably they will through the summer. But does that mean that there is a storage house, if you will, of nutrients in the form of those leaves that is there accessible and available up to the point where it's needed Aha. by the microorganisms in the environment. So there are leaves which, um, well, okay, so, so let me back up. Microorganisms, when they're looking to consume leaves, are looking to consume a certain ratio of nutrients. And most leaves, or dead leaves just in general, at least if we're talking about fall leaves, which have fallen off, have had most of the nutrients sucked out of them. And what you're left with is primarily carbon and with just some residual, you know, nitrogen, phosphorus, etc. And so the leaves which get decomposed the fastest are the ones, typically the ones which are the highest in nitrogen and, and phosphorus. That would be, for example, like alder. Alder is a good example of this. But then you have species species like oak, for example, which decompose very, very slowly because they contain um, far less nitrogen, for, ex for instance, than older, and they are also much tougher. So, so what oak winds up being to communities where oak is quite dominant is oak is kind of a long-term staple food, whereas alder, just as one wow. example, gets eaten pretty much as soon as it's available. I think, you know, in, in Maryland, the predominant forest composition is usually oak hickory, just like yeah, Virginia. That's right. So yeah, oak is probably going to be the majority of what's left over after right. winter in your pond. Wonderful. Okay. So what we need then is we need a diversity of nutrients. Um, diversity of nutrient sources, probably. You mean different kinds of leaves? Yes. Different kinds right. of leaves. Um, if, you know, when we're talking about the, the base level of um, the food chain. What should we be thinking as we're dealing with this in our aquarium? What, what should be our goal? Do we want to be taking nutrients out or do we want to be adding them? Honestly, I think allowing a certain amount of material to decompose is, is healthy. It keeps it within that system. Unless you're seeing signs that there's a problem, an aquarium where you do have an overabundance of nutrients, so you are seeing a lot of algae blooms, something like that is actually a pretty useful tool. Now, in my case, in my aquarium, I have floating plants. And so in just trying to keep them from like completely choking out all the light, I wind up scooping some out every week. Um, so that does remove nutrients from the system. So as long as you're not adding a whole ton of nutrients, particularly nitrogen, phosphorus, well, nitrogen and phosphorus are really the big two that you have to be careful of. You shouldn't have to take out too much if you take out anything. It's a tricky topic, I have to say, yeah. because it's like you can't say, no, never remove anything, but at the same time, it's not like you have to remove a whole ton. I mean, a lot of it just comes down to, to me at least, it comes down to, does my aquarium appear healthy? Is every, are the right, inhabitants right. acting and, normal? And, and I guess that's the way I operate. I mean, I look at my tanks every day. So I'm looking at them day after day, month after month, essentially year after year. And I'm making adjustments based on what I'm seeing what I'm yeah. experiencing kind of a, as a continuum. And I do add nutrients. I do not do it every day. Mm -hmm. I don't even do it every week. Okay, here's the thing though. If we have a, a great biodiversity of life, then that life requires more nutrients. Now, the reality is the cycle feeds itself. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it's everything... It's Everything is feeding everything else in the cycle. So the need to inject nutrients into that is somewhat limited, although it's critical. So we need to be continuously adding nutrients, but we need to do it at a level that maintains a certain stability, I guess. Mm -hmm. 
it comes down to an art form. Yes. <laughs> yes. I guess we got as far as we can go with this.